Hey all, it is I, Anthony the Canadian Guy, and welcome to WrestleSode, the solution to your wrestling information problems. WrestleSode is a member of the Win Column Sports Network, so remember to check us out at wincolumnsports.ca to be kept up to date on everything happening here in Alberta in the world of wrestling. Today, funny, not Alberta, Saskatchewan. Did you know that Alberta and Saskatchewan in the world of wrestling are essentially cousins? We have a lot of different crossover stars, people who wrestle here, who wrestle there, and vice versa. I thought it'd be kind of a treat to dive in a little bit into the Saskatchewan scene and see what it's like over there. It's like a weird backwards parallel reality where heels are faces and faces are heels. And it's really exciting. So today we will be talking about Prairie Pro Wrestling. They just put on uh, one of their first couple of shows just recently recently in Saskatoon where they had a headlining match which was an unsanctioned match between Jacob Creed and Michael Allen Richard Clark. Oh, those are names you recognize? Yeah, I thought you might recognize them. Obviously, Michael Allen Richard Clark here in Alberta being your PWA heavyweight champion as well as Jacob Creed I know has wrestled around Alberta a whole bunch. He's wrestled a bunch for CWE. He's been tag champ there. I don't even know how many times. So, you got to be listening in on this. this. is a very fascinating little thing. I talk with my good friend, Mike the Sign Guy, Mike Ducey, who I who lives out in Saskatchewan. He's a big fan of both the Saskatchewan and the Alberta scene. I'm like, I don't know anyone better who I could be chatting with. Talk a little bit and learning a little bit about Saskatchewan and its wrestling scene than Mike Ducey, the Sign Guy. So stay tuned and listen in on this little bit of a chat here about PPW, the most recent show, um, some of the stars that they have out there in Saskatchewan, who are crossover stars here in Alberta are. So stay tuned, and you'll hear from that right after this. Hello, friends. This is Spencer Love interrupting your regularly scheduled podcast experience to remind you to tune in to wincolumsports.ca every Wednesday for Conversations with Love, the one-on-one interview podcast featuring the best of the best in Canadian pro wrestling and available wherever podcasts are played. Tune in to CWL on the WCSN for your previews, reviews, breaking news, and now interviews proudly brought to you by beercade yeg hey everyone anthony back i am joined by my friend mike the sign guy mike how are you doing today buddy not too bad how are you doing anthony dude i'm doing fantastic i'm super excited to be talking saskatchewan wrestling today because i like as for me i get to come in like kind of with a bit of a blank slate i know some things obviously through twitter and yeah. uh and there's other things I get to learn fresh today. Obviously, we've got some crossover talents. Like I've, we were saying before this podcast started, it's like looking through a mirror in like a reverse image world as you look <laughs> into Saskatchewan from the Alberta scene. But uh, specifically, we're going to be talking a little bit about PPW today, uh, Prairie Pro Wrestling. So a relatively new promotion down there in Saskatchewan. So it's a great place to start. They use a lot of talents from Alberta as well. Um, so I think it's just a great way to guide our audience a little bit into the or to the Saskatchewan scene. So starting off with this today, the reason Mike is here, Mike is a huge fan of Saskatchewan wrestling, but not only that, wrestling in general. He also knows the Alberta scene really well. He's very well known in Saskatchewan for bringing some top-notch signs, so apparently he's got competition these days. Um, but yeah, true. Mike the Sign Guy. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> not too bad. Well, I've not already too said bad. that, but uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about uh, Saskatchewan wrestling. So you know the For Alberta sure. scene and you know the Saskatchewan scene a little bit. Can you just name some of your favorite wrestlers in Saskatchewan? Um, does it don't have to be necessarily crossovers to Alberta, but just can you give some uh, some names out there that people might know, they might not know, some people that we can look out for? Well, I would say that one of the most popular names in all of Saskatchewan wrestling has to be uh, Mike McSugar. That's uh, known from the clandestine society from his dildo on the pole match, right? Yes, with uh, Dylan <clears throat> Stone. That was a freaking hilarious match, and that was my first introduction to Mike McSugar. And yeah. I absolutely love Mike McSugar now. It didn't take long for me to like Mike. I think it took for him to get from the curtain to the ring, and I already knew that I was like, this is going to be special. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's definitely the individual. He's a character, and he's one of my favorites. He always puts on a great show, like whether he's uh, a heel or a face. You know, people love him, people hate him. So 
it is crazy to think of him as a heel, to be completely honest, just knowing <laughs> what I know of him. Because like I said, I'm trying to guide my audience into that. If you ever watched Mike McSugar at the Clandestine Society, which you can do by going to Backbreaker Media and signing up for their streaming service. Anyways, he actually gets to work heel out there in Saskatchewan as well. It's kind of uh, in Regina. Like He uh, wrestles in Regina, and he's a big face in Regina when he wrestles for ringside wrestling. Mm-hmm. But when he uh, goes to Saskatoon, it's crazy. I don't know if it's uh, something in the water in Saskatoon, but uh, he just hates Saskatoon, and he hates all the fans of Saskatoon, and he's not afraid of uh, sharing that hatred either. So I did see a little bit of a clip. I guess nothing makes him more flaccid than the fans <laughs> in Saskatoon. I did get to see that clip. Uh, that was awesome. That was being spread around Twitter. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's still weird to me. Like hearing him say that, I'm just like He's such a face to me. Still, God, I love it. But you're saying that, like we've had this talk before. You're saying Saskatoon wrestling specifically is like all upside down when it comes to heels and faces. Yeah, like uh, so apparently in Alberta, yeah, Davy O'Doyle is a heel. Yo, oh, yeah. Michael, Michael Allen, Richard Clark is Absolute a heel, heel, but they're abs- absolutely loved and adored in Saskatoon. Which I love, just for clarity, because, and I know there's going to be some people listening in from Saskatchewan for the first time, so what we have termed here in Alberta as the Sask Boys tend to be very, a very heel faction, almost. They're not really even a (laughs) faction, but they're known as the Sask Boys, especially within the PWA, so Michael Allen, Richard Clark, who is our current PWA heavyweight champion, and then, of course, we have Davey O'Doyle and Braden Parsons as a tag team in the league, which the league. I know Saskatchewan hasn't had a chance to experience yet. But the league did win Backbreaker Media or fifth or Backbreaker Media's fifth annual um, tag team of the year in 2019 here in Alberta. I will uh, admit that I voted for that those awards, and I voted for the league. <laughs> Hey, that's Me? totally fine. You know who the league are here. I know, I know the league very well. I have never seen the league compete as a team in Saskatchewan, unfortunately, but uh, I'm definitely very familiar with both uh, Braden Parsons and Davey O'Doyle, the Bear Cub himself. Dude, it's a fantastic tag team, and I'm just gonna say this to all the Saskatchewan fans out there: these are your boys, and they make like one of the best tag teams ever here. <laughs> And everybody in Alberta boos them so hard, but they all love they all love the league. We all know. We know. <laughs> they love they love to hate the league. Absolutely. Yeah. And then of course the fourth member of that who I didn't actually mention yet was Sean Moore, who's the Sean other Sask Moore. Boy. The other Sask boy. So like it's so weird though, because like, yeah, heels here in Alberta, but like you said in Saskatoon faces, you said the Michael Allen Richard Clark, who is one of the biggest heels in Alberta, is the biggest face in Saskatoon. Uh, he's going to hate me for saying this, but he is beloved, beloved in Saskatoon, like, yeah, big time. Well, I my first ever show that I attended in Saskatoon, they were chanting his name. They're chanting his name, and I'm just like, wait, where, what, what, what's going on? Michael Allen Richard Clark is a good guy in Saskatoon. It blew my mind. It doesn't make sense to me either. As a person person who has taken part in so many We Are Bus People chants, you know what I mean? There's people who chant We Are Bus People. But yeah, I see these signs of him in Saskatoon and all these people who love Michael Allen, Richard Clark. Don't get me wrong. Dude's a phenomenal wrestler. He's an amazing talent. He's so not a face to me, though. It's it's wild. It really is uh, like bizarre as bizarre is the best way to put it for me yeah yeah. uh, i've i've taken signs to shows in regina and he's come and ripped up my signs and stomped on it and yelled at me and tells me hey you can't do push-ups or you can't do sit-ups either and (laughs) called me a bus person every name under the under the sign right right and then i go to saskatoon and i see him compete and he's like hey Fan, big fan. <laughs> love, fans love him up there. Dude, so Michael Allen Richard Clark is fantastic. Like, so what you would say to him in Saskatoon as being the biggest face would be like the Michael Richard Blaze in Calgary kind of a thing. Because MRB can be a heel out there in Saskatchewan, can't he? Uh, yeah, he's been a heel here, but he's also been a face. Like I've seen it. I've seen him uh, go both ways. Pardon <laughs> the pun. <laughs> hey, it's fine. It's yeah, a fun hey. podcast. 
Yeah, like uh, I've seen him uh, be a heel in uh, Regina, and I've seen him be a face up in Saskatoon as well. You know, I guess it depends on the day and who he's facing. Yeah, absolutely. He's just, he's just uh, that good that he can uh, do whatever. Well, right? those two are the two from around here, both Alberta and Saskatchewan, who got the tryouts for the WWE last summer. Right? You know what I mean? Like, there's a reason oh, yeah. MRB and Michael Allen Richard Clark got those. But you know what? There's a lot of talents who I think just as good and deserve just as much as those two when it comes to getting tryouts. Because, you know, like, even if maybe some wrestlers I find aren't necessarily at the same skill level as them in the ring. I definitely think there are some wrestlers around here whose promos and character work are so phenomenal that they could have easily been in uh, a major promotion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, you see uh, the strides that Zoe Sager has been making within yeah. the last... Like, she's only been at it for, like, like, less than two years now, I believe. Less than two years. Yeah, she's looking right? at just over about a year and a half, almost two years. I, I had an interview with her. All that information is listed there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just look in the, the back uh, episodes of uh, WrestleSode for the interview with you and Zoe Sager, right? Exactly. So let's talk uh, Prairie Pro Wrestling PPW here a little bit. I think it's a great starting off point because they use a lot of promotions or they use a lot of talents from Alberta over there um, and it's a great way to kind of guide our audience. So let's talk a little bit about some of the crossover between Alberta and Saskatchewan Absolutely. and then let's talk a little bit about some of the other people that we don't get to see. So some people who have already wrestled for uh, uh, Prairie Pro Wrestling that would be known around here. So Michael Allen, Richard Clark, Davey O'Doyle, all the people in the league essentially have league. wrestled there. Yeah. Okay, then we've also got MRB has wrestled there. Sheik Akbar yeah. Shabazz. She has wrestled there. Uh, the latest uh, show they put on it had uh, Zoe Sager and Jack Pride. Yeah, and great talents as well. Yeah. Great ways to introduce some of these people. Um, Absolutely. But, uh, and then you guys also had uh, Jude Dawkins up there. <laughs> Jude Dawkins, the cheetah bear. The cheetah bear, man. Yeah. He's so good, right? I love oh, the cheetah bear. Like, uh, so funny little story from the last show. Uh, so someone in the crowd started chanting, man bear pig, man bear pig, and that <laughs> caught on like fire. So if uh, you see man bear pig making its rounds over uh, social media, maybe uh, that's why. <laughs> that's amazing, and that makes me so happy. But uh, yeah. but I, I do love Jude Dawkins, um, and I've been He's seeing great. that stuff. I saw Jack Pride posting about that today, the man bear pig, <laughs> everything on, yeah. on Facebook and everything right now. But... Um, not only that, we've also had uh, Jake, uh, Jacob Creed, who also wrestles out there uh, for Prairie Pro Wrestling, who also wrestles here in Alberta for people like uh, CWE, our Canadian Wrestling's Elite. Um, and he's been tag champ there a couple of times, as far as I know. Yeah. Most of the time I would go to a CWE show, I'd always see uh, Jacob Creed there. But there's a lot of different like kind of crossover stars. But Prairie Pro Wrestling, relatively new. What would you say are some of the biggest storylines going on in Prairie Pro Wrestling right now? Well, I'd say right now, currently, the biggest storyline would have to be the, I guess you'd call it a blood feud between Jacob Creed and Michael Allen, Richard Clark. So this is a really interesting feud because this is definitely one of the feuds that I got very well notified about in Alberta um, yeah. because I was like, what is happening there? Is What's going on? Shoot work. I don't know what's happening out there in Saskatchewan. Um but it was very intriguing to me because, for instance, it happened just before the Clandestine Society. And I was at the Clandestine Society and Michael Allen mm -hmm. Richard Clark was at the Clandestine Society. And everybody was kind of like, what's happening? But he was so professionally not said anything. Nothing got said. And uh, I was like, damn it. I want to know what was happening in Saskatchewan. <laughs> um, but uh, so, yeah. So it started off. So how did this whole thing kind of start? You know, I know that... Uh, you weren't at every single show that they've put nope. on right now, so we should just make that clear. We don't have all the storylines perfectly known, um, or even all of the talents are well-read or anything like that. This is our introduction into there. So so my understanding, and they uh, have been putting uh, shows on YouTube recently, Prairie Pro Wrestling, but uh, Jacob Creed and Michael Allen Richard Clark had a match, and uh, the one... I believe uh, Michael Allen Richard Clark got busted open. Okay. He was bleeding, and uh, he didn't like that so much, so maybe he retaliated and uh, busted open Jacob Creed, and then it just spilled out of control from there, where they're uh, brawling under the crowd, and I believe it was a double, maybe it was a double disqualification, a double countout. Looking at cage match here, it says double countout. So. Okay, yeah, there you go. So then... Uh, 
the uh, it was actually the night before the clandestine society this past December, mm-hmm. and uh, they were to have a rematch, I believe. And as Michael Allen Richard Clark made his way to the ring, he was attacked by uh, Jacob Creed, and the match never started. And everybody came out and pulled them apart, and they were definitely not happy with each other. And Creed got fired on the spot. Crazy, uh, and yeah, that, then they had their. I guess you would call it kind of like the rubber, the blow off match last night, an unsanctioned yeah. match because Jacob Creed does not work for PPW no, anymore. No, they fired him, but they, uh, I believe, uh, Mark asked them to bring him back so we could, they could have uh, their blow off match. So okay. that went down last night, and that was a wild match in itself as well, all in the crowd. And you can see some of these pictures that have come up from this <laughs> match between Jacob Creed and Michael Allen, Richard Clark. There's this one that I saw. And like Jacob Creed is almost being like hung off the side of the ring. Yeah. And Michael Allen Richard Clark is like pulling up on this rope, um, that, which is, I'm assuming, the same rope that my, uh, that Jacob Creed brings to the ring because he yeah, with the cowbell. Him. Yeah, with that cowbell. Because like I've seen him bring that rope to the ring countless Absolutely. times for CWE shows. Um, and it just looked so brutal. I was like, why am I not? in Saskatoon <laughs> right now. I understand it's like six hours away from me, but I'm like, well, I'm not there for the show. Um, but it, it just, it looked like such an amazing show. Do you remember, do you have the card off the top of your head from last night? I do. I uh, actually uh, have it right here. There's eight matches in total. Let's go through them a little bit. Let's see if we can talk a little bit about some people that we know, some people that we don't know, oh, and let's be... introduce some people. Okay. So uh, the first uh, match of the night would be uh, Zoe Sager versus Jack Pride. And they're definitely well-known names across uh, Alberta, right? Oh, absolutely. Everybody here knows Zoe Sager, one of the longest-reigning PWA women's champion. Jack yeah. Pride, uh, such a phenomenal start to man of two minds. I love Jack Pride. Absolutely. So, yeah, they kicked off the show, and that was a great match. The crowd really were uh, loving uh, Zoe Sager. Right, yeah. yeah. And uh, this started off uh, very much uh, Jack versus Zoe with uh, sportsmanship. Mm-hmm. And then that quickly broke down. Into pride. Into pride, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the Saskatchewan no. folks who aren't quite as familiar with Jack Pride, he is a top-notch talent that is controlled by two different people in his head. Literally the friendliest person in the world, Jack, and then Pride, like just a giant jerk. He's proud, you know what I mean? Like he always puts yeah. himself first. And when they when he switches it off, like he just turns into a completely different person and wrestler. I love it. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely uh, something to see. Like some of the guys in the crowd, you could see them being like, "What's going on here?" Like they were just shaking hands, being all sportsmanship, and this guy Pride is uh, not having any of that anymore. So yeah, definitely follow Jack Pride's Instagrams and Facebooks and Twitters if you want to be kept up to date on how his mind changes because he makes a lot of videos that really explain his character, and they're really well done. Yeah. Yeah. So then the second uh, match of the night was uh, Ace Riviera, who's, I think, mainly a uh, Saskatchewan guy. Yeah, versus, I'm not very familiar with Ace Riviera. Uh, versus uh, Joey Vendetta, who uh, I believe made some uh, dates with RCW in the last uh, few months. Potentially. I don't recall any Joey Vendetta, but then I only started watching the local shows after my, my daughter was born again. So right. <laughs> I was off for yeah. a little bit there, and it's possible that he's wrestled here a couple of times. Yeah, I know Joey Vendetta's a uh, big name in Regina. Yeah, so tell so, me a little bit about them, because this is going to be an introduction, for instance. My kip- r- listeners might not know any of these guys. Right, well, Joey Vendetta, I believe he's the owner of Ringside Wrestling out of Regina. Okay. And uh, Ace Riviera competes, uh, he at one point was the HIW Wildside champion. Okay, wow. But, okay. Uh, yeah, that... Uh, he uh, has a big feud going on with uh, Mick Sh- Mike McSugar and Regina. Currently, they're kind of had a feud, and now they're friends. Uh, it's kind of hard to say. Interesting. Where like they're a going Cesaro with Famous type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, so HIW is a name that I'm familiar with. Um, they shut down. Uh, there was yes. last year, correct? Yes, in October of this. Uh, the power of me last year. Yeah. It's always sad when you hear about the smaller promotions kind of being shut down. But, hey, you know what? That's why we're all growing. PPW is here now. Um, Yeah. For instance. (laughs) Yeah, HIW, that was sad because that was, like, kind of the promotion I really enjoyed going to. And then they shut their doors. So 
So then you just find other promotions from there, right? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. The talent live on, but the promotion may be dead. So exactly. Yeah. Um. So what's the next match that we have here? Oh, by the way, who won these matches? We might oh, as well okay. give well, these. <laughs> Zoe Sager beat Jack Pride and okay. uh, Ace Riviera. The low blow with the ref uh, didn't see and uh, beat Joey Vendetta. Heel tactics. Yeah, the dirty, dirty heel, right? <laughs> like the Sask boys. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, never mind. No, this is Saskatoon. Backwards. All right. Who's next? <laughs> they're, they're, just, they're just known as the boys here. Yeah, right. They're just the local boys. <laughs> yeah. Um. So then uh, a couple names. Uh, Tony Novak, who okay. I believe mainly competes in Saskatoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, wrestled the guy. I never really caught his name. T. Y. Sampson, maybe. Okay. I believe yeah. he competes with uh, R. C. W. I I don't know. Potentially, I, we'll, uh, we'll have to look into this. This hasn't been updated on CageMatch.net yet. So right, yeah. Like I never caught his name, so I can't really say too much about that match. But uh, Tony Tony Novak, he kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Mustafa Ali in a way. Okay. Little short and uh, high flyer. So he was trained by Lance Storm. That's a name I know. Um, I know he was trained by Lance Storm. That's all I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've I've seen him a few times. He's uh pretty uh energetic. I'll say that. Cool, cool. And then uh, so after that, it was uh, Jude Dawkins, the Cheetah Bear, mm-hmm. and uh, Mitch Clark, Danger Zone. Okay. So I know they're both names coming from yeah, out Mitch of Alberta, Cl- right? I know Mitch Clark. I believe he wrestles up in uh, Monster Pro, I believe it is. Right. Yeah. And then Cheetah Bear, obviously, he wrestles in Monster Pro as well as RCW. Okay. Yes. I know both those names then. We're good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've seen Cheetah Bear. Co- or, yeah. Uh, Jude Dawkins quite a few times. And I always, I'm a big fan of the Cheetah Bear. Myself. Oh, me too. He's actually doing yeah. really well for himself as of late because I also know he also made his debut in Vancouver recently. So, oh, really? so he's spreading across all of Western Canada right now. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah. Like yeah, a che- well, like a man bear pig virus. Oh, man. <laughs> when, when that. <laughs> Like I'm just la- right I'm now. just laughing. I'm just laughing thinking about it. <laughs> when uh, the, whoever it was in the crowd started chanting uh, the che- or pardon me, the man bear pig, you could just see the entire crowd erupt. And from then on, it was just man bear pig, man bear. All just all the rest of the show, all the rest of the match. Anyways, I I so. like so I love the cheetah bear. I love Jude Dawkins, but I kind of really want to chant man bear pig. I I think that's going to be something that's going to oh, stick around for quite a while. Uh, Saskatoon. If Jude's listening to this, I'm sorry. I didn't hope this podcast was the reason for this. Yeah, it's just going to be a thing. He's going to murder me. Now. Have you seen this man? He's huge. I I have seen him, and he's he's a big fellow. Yeah. <laughs> so who? I'm sorry. He was wrestling against he, Mitch Clark. Against uh, yeah, Mitch Clark at the Danger Zone. Right. And, and, ha- and uh, how did that one go? Yeah, Mitch Clark got the win in that. One, Ooh, actually. good for Mitch Clark, yeah. eh? Yeah, I was surprised. I thought uh, Jude Bear, uh, Jude Dawkins had his number, but no, no. I gotta get up so, to Edmonton in the area more because like I haven't actually got a chance to watch Mitch Clark wrestle live yet. So like I feel so bad. Like I gotta get on this man. Who am I? Some sort of Alberta based wrestling podcaster? If I don't know like <laughs> the hundred plus wrestlers we have and all the promotions. Oh man. You got like four or five different promotions all on the go there. Yeah. So you got to be if you want to be number one, you got to attend them all, right? Right. Well, oh, <laughs> anybody want to sponsor me? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. So, uh, what was after Mitch Clark and uh, so then uh, so then uh, uh, Davy O'Doyle and Mike McSugar. That, this is a match I had like uh, personal. Really looking forward to this one because I know both of these guys quite well, and I've seen them compete all over Saskatchewan. So, so if this was a match taking place in Alberta, I would immediately say clearly Davy is the heel and Mike is the face. But yeah. this is this is weirdo backwards town Saskatoon, so it was yeah. the opposite direction, correct? Opposite, completely opposite. Oh, weird. White okay. baby face Davy O'Doyle <laughs> and uh, the uh, much hated individual Mike McSugar. Just dirty tactics from McSugar, man. Like, you ever see a guy spit in another man's mouth? Uh, Mike, yeah, Mike there probably you go. has, yeah. Yeah, Mike McSugar. There you go. Oh, Big gross. gob in Davey O'Doyle's mouth. Ugh. Oh, that's Ugh. disgusting. <laughs> 
But okay, so like when okay, I gotta know what were some of the chants if you can remember going on during this match because I can only imagine what the chants would be like in Alberta. Oh, there'd be man. a lot of shave your chest chants. There'd be a lot of you know what I mean. Well, well, it's just mostly like Davy, Davy, or like O'Doyle rules. It's always O'Doyle rules, right? Right. Oh so, man, we I never hear these chants here. Like I don't know if I've actually heard a Davy chant before. Which who is rules? terrifying. O'Doyle rules. O'Doyle rules, man. O'Doyle rules. It's such absolutely. a weird name because there's two different people who wrestle with the name O'Doyle. And it just Kevin must be O'Doyle. like Kevin O'Doyle and Davey O'Doyle. So you know the other yeah. one as well. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it's just like, and he, of course, does the O'Doyle rules thing as well. I'm like, are these like <laughs> cousins or something? I don't know. But they both use O'Doyle. And you know what? I love the name O'Doyle. It works really well. Absolutely. I was actually fortunate enough to see a CWE show where it was a six-man tag and the two O'Doyles were up against each other. Oh, really? So, yeah, O'Doyle versus O'Doyle. You know, what's going to happen? Well, O'Doyle, one is... O- O'Doyle's going to happen. That's of why. course. One is substantially larger than the other one in terms of Quite a bit. size. Quite a bit, yeah. But, I mean, like Davia, for instance, he might be a smaller guy, but he's such an incredible talent, so... You know, uh, he's shorter. Yeah, he's shorter, but he uh, packs a punch. We'll yes, say he that, does. right? You can't, you can't let you like, you can't overlook. You can't sleep on Davy O'Doyle, as he would say. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But uh, so, who went over in this match? So, uh, McSugar <laughs> did win that one. McSugar did actually. win this one with the feet, feet on the ropes, feet on the ropes, feet on the ropes. Cheap yeah, win. now that I remember, yeah. Oh, poor and then Davey, he, man, I don't see him win enough. <laughs> 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 he attacked, uh, and he attacked poor Davy after the match, and uh, Zoe Sager came to the rescue. What? Oh, okay, so backwards yeah. in my world. They're right? feuding against each other in my world. So, oh, really? <laughs> well, really? because, well, so the league, as you know, Davy O'Doyle and Braden yeah. Parsons had Kylie Morgan on their side of things, and then yes. on the other side we had Above Average Joe's, which is Kenny Stryker and Aiden Adams, and Zoe Sager. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was a little bit different totally oh, they're different gonna, they're gonna like just hate us after this <laughs> uh, we're not breaking kayfabe we're extending oh. the invitation across there provinces. you go there, there you, you go. go all right anyways who came up next uh so uh, a couple names you might not be familiar with mm-hmm. bucky mcgraw and a newcomer named levi knight I don't aka know ginger that. snaps ginger snaps <laughs> yeah he's the uh he's a He's a tall uh, redhead, and uh, people like to call him Ginger Snaps, and they're just snapping at him, and uh, it's quite quite funny to see. Actually. That sounds like an awesome kind of thing to be in the crowd for, just a bunch of people yeah. snapping and calling just him Ginger snapping, Snaps. Right? Ginger Snaps. And how tall would you yeah. say he is, approximately? Well, he's got to be about 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, so he's, just he's, under you, kind of thing. He, that's where I'm like, <laughs> even to me, he seems like a tall individual. For uh, sure. I always say that though, because the first time I got to stand next to you at the clandestine society, I think <laughs> I had to like crank my neck all the way up. Yeah. Cause you know, I'm way not up. a tall guy. So yeah, you got to look well, up way up. And there yeah. I am. Right? We were making those jokes. I'm like, well, at least you'll know it's raining first. Stuff, right? <laughs> like, we'll figure that out. Yeah. But what's oh, the weather like? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just raining and then you spit on me. I think that's how that works for <laughs> tall people. I believe that's how it worked growing up in school. But yeah. Uh, Okay, so we had. I'm sorry. What was the gentleman's real name? Ginger Snaps. Now that's what's stuck in my head. Le- I believe it's Levi Knight. Levi Knight, and he was yeah. up against who again? Bucky McGraw. Okay, so I don't know too much about Bucky McGraw or yeah. Levi Knight. So you want to tell me a little bit about who they are? So uh, Bucky McGraw, he's got some videos out there on YouTube. The re-education of uh, Bucky McGraw. He's the uh, wrestling smartest man. Oh, I like this. So gimmick. yeah, so he's got. Uh, He's got his like notebook and he's all into reading and stuff like that. And uh, he comes out always pointing to his head because he's got the brains, right? He may not be the uh, the strongest guy, but he's got the brains to beat you. That's so, awesome. With a name yeah. like Bucky McGraw, which is like like about as far from one of those like Einsteiny names you could think of. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like did you ever you liked Supernatural, right? I love Supernatural. I can't remember the name of the character because he only lasted until like season four or something like that. But uh, he worked at the bar. He was a genius. Oh, oh yeah. But you know what I mean? Like yeah, the name, I like know, Bucky yeah. McGraw, just gives like brings <laughs> like when you're like, oh, he's a genius. I was like, this is the gentleman I think of. 
Yeah, that guy from Supernatural he is kind of like a redneck, but he just happens to be like a brainiac at the same time. Uh, yeah, right? that's exactly yeah. it. So I hear the name Bucky McGraw, and I'm just like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. The crowd, like, that was a good one, too, because Bucky is very vocal, and he uh, grunts a lot. <laughs> so so the crowd picked up on that, and every time he'd grunt, they're just grunting along with him. So the his entire match, fans are just like, arr, arr, grunting the whole time. It was, uh, it was really something to see in here. <laughs> that sounds amazing. I assume he was yeah. the heel in this. Yes, he's a heel in yeah. uh, Saskatoon. Yeah. It just feels, oh, I'm, but in Regina, reversed, correct? <laughs> well, yeah, like he had been, uh, he had been a face and uh, a good guy in uh, Regina there for quite a while. But he's a heel. Uh, he's a tag team champion with Cannonball Kelly right now, currently with uh, Ringside Wrestling. So. Oh, there you go, fantastic! Yeah. We got to give the guy his props then. Yeah, he's a he's a champion in his own right, right? Did he win last night? He did. He did. Poor Ginger so, Snaps. Ginger Snaps will get his uh, win eventually, but last night was not his night. I feel like if he loses, it becomes really somber, and people like turn into like early two thousands like jazz rooms, and they're just like, <laughs> well, instead of clapping, they yeah, just snap just a bunch of snaps. Right? They snap for him. If they if the people aren't doing that when he does cool stuff, then I'm very sad. But I hope that's what they're doing. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we had Bucky McGraw going then over, and then what happened after that? El Asesino, who uh, he's, I know he's competed in uh, PWA a few times in the past. He went up against Cannonball Kelly, who is actually the uh, current North American champion for ringside wrestling in Regina. Oh, wow. So, but uh, El Asesino got the win in that one. He uh, hit, hit the big uh, frog splash, or whatever he likes to call it. So yeah, yeah. So I so I'm looking up here. So he has wrestled a couple of different times uh, for the PWA um, here in Alberta. Not very often. He, he took place in a Commonwealth Title Six way where Sean Moore defeated him, Barry Grayson, Max and Flexwell, Mojabari, Mojabari, and Nightmare Number Four, which are all names over people over here understand. And then he also yeah. lost the match once to Gabriel back in 2018. But he doesn't seem to wrestle here too much. So I'm actually not too familiar with him. Only thing I know about him is that he de- did beat MRB at the last show. Or yes. The yeah, the last uh, Saskatoon PPW show he beat uh, MRB, put him through a table. Uh, so, so this guy, so I guess must be like something of like really high regard there in Saskatchewan. Then I would say El Asesino is probably one of the top heels in all of Saskatchewan. I can say that like pretty confidently. So this is one of those names, for instance, like I don't get to see the crossover into Alberta very often, but El Asesino sounds awesome. For instance, I saw the name. I didn't quite know even how to pronounce it. So Yeah, the uh, Mexican devil or however it is. But... El Asesino. I like it. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely well-known in Saskatchewan. If you go to any of the shows here and you say El Asesino, people know who you're talking about. Well, we got to see him more here in Alberta then. I want to see him more anyways. You're making me excited for him. And you said he was up against Cannonball Kelly? Cannonball Kelly, yeah. So who worked face? I don't know much about Cannonball Kelly either. So uh, so Cannonball Kelly, he uh, he's the current ringside champion for in Regina, Saskatchewan. And But uh, El Asesino beat him with uh, Death from Above, I think he calls it. What is that? And, and El, it's just a frog spot. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But El Asesino, I don't know if I've ever seen him wrestle as, like, a face. Like, he's always just been, like, a heel, no matter what, right? Well. And he's uh, he's very much about um, making the jerk-off gesture and uh, throwing <laughs> uh, imaginary jizz into the fans' faces at ringside. So, like, him and McSugar must get along really well. Yeah, I'm sure they would form, like, a great tag team. <laughs> Fantastic heel tag team there. Yeah. And uh, so who went over in that match? El Asesino. El Asesino did. Yeah. So he wins a lot too then. Yeah, I don't know if he's lost since uh, PPW stuttered up. Oof. With wins over Cannonball Kelly, MRB, and uh, I'm not sure who he wrestled and beat the first show, but he's got the last two shows. He's definitely won. Right? He beat Mitch Clark high... in the first show. Yeah, okay, there you go. See, there I, you go. I did so... something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then, so um, I guess that makes the last one, I believe, if my numbers are correct. Yeah, the uh, main event would be uh, Michael Allen, Richard Clark versus Jacob Creed in the unsanctioned match. So talk a little bit about this match. I just want to hear it, like, unfiltered through your mouth because, like, I hear it was an experience. That was wild. That was a wild match all into the crowd. Like, uh, 
they took the because we have uh, guardrails around the ring, so they took their the guardrail off and they're into the crowd and brawling all over the uh, the arena, not the arena, but the, the venue, and they're bleeding everywhere and uh, yeah, the fans are just loving it and little kids crying and yeah. It's so emotional. I mean, kids especially, like, they really make shows because they, everything they do is real, right? Like, when yeah. kids react, it's a very real reaction. And Absolutely. I think it really helps bring out the crowd in specific moments, especially if you can get a kid crying, man, do they shower booze on to the wrestler. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. I uh, recently brought my uh, niece and nephew to a show in Regina. It was their first ever show. Mm-hmm. And uh, watching them react to the good guys and the bad guys and the bad guys coming up to him and like yelling at them. <laughs> my, my nephew like jumping back in terror cause he's not <laughs> used to having like a big burly man yell at him. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so things like that, like little kids, like, cause it's all real to them. Right. No. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, yeah. and I, I think it really brings out the kid in you. I think personally, um, when you get to go and experience wrestling when there's kids around, because like you just, you really pull yourself into the moment. I think kids make wrestling shows 100%. I think they're great additions to the crowd. Even adult shows, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't want a kid at the Clandestine Society. And it was probably like my favorite show. But <laughs> like kids, though, they it's so much fun to see them react. Absolutely. Because it's, uh, it's pure emotion, right? Like, you you might go to a show and maybe you're a fan of, like, MRB, but he's wrestling as a bad guy. Right. So are you going to – so you should probably boo him, right? You might want to cheer him, but, like, if he's trying to be a heel, you want to boo the heels, right? Absolutely. I, I'll use Michael Allen Richard Clark as a perfect example of this here in Alberta. Everybody boos Michael Allen Richard Clark. I think inside everybody wants to cheer Michael Allen yeah. Richard Clark. Yeah, he's so good at what he does that mm-hmm. you want, you kind of want to cheer him, but because he's a bad guy, you got it. You have to boo him, right? Same with the league. They're like highly entertaining, but you have to boo the league. If right? people in Saskatchewan are curious to see how the league reacts to things, they really have to go check out Thaddeus Archer the Third's YouTube channel, the, the <laughs> Archer Report, because there's a lot of backstage stuff. It happens to be within the PWA. And you get to see the league a lot in backstage shenaniganry. It's a lot of fun. I have watched a lot of uh, the Archer Report, and I am a fan. So yes, I've I have seen the the league and their uh, heelish tactics. We'll say. <laughs> oh, I love it! But before we do end here today, because we're going a little bit long, but that's totally okay. I want to talk a little bit about PPW because again, last night they unveiled their new championship. Correct? Yes, they did. The uh, tournament starting up at the next show. So a tournament that's going to be happening here uh, over the next little bit. So that should be really fun. Do we? I don't know any of the contestants. Do you know anybody who's in this tournament as of yet? Like, have you? Uh, the they no, they haven't announced any of the names for the tournament. But uh, I can uh, probably assume a few of the guys that yeah. are regular. You want to yeah. just throw some names out there that maybe we should be looking out for in this tournament? That you well, might I would, guess. Well, I would I would have to guess that Michael Allen Richard Clark would be a front runner yeah. as well as Athletino himself. That's a great answer as right. well. What about Davey o- that's what I was about to say. What about O'Doyle? <laughs> Davy O'Doyle. I was just gonna say, like you got it. You can't count out Davy O'Doyle. He uh, won the uh, tournament for their first ever uh, food truck war. So he's won for uh, PPW in the past. So I can only see him winning more. Cool, cool. Would he be the first inaugural PPW champion? Time will tell. I guess. I, if the belt was a hairier belt, I'd say it had to be. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, if it was, like, uh, a chest hair belt, which, by the way, Davey should make a chest hair belt. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> they they unveiled the championship last night, and that is a very nice-looking championship. That's no tin plate championship. No, I'm actually looking at it right now, and I really yeah. dig it, because it's got very Saskatchewan colors, like that yeah. green. The green um, and yellow. Yeah, the green and yellow, man. But, uh, you know, as an Alberta, I just look at that and I'm like, oh, that's so Saskatchewan. It looks amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's a very pretty belt. So that would look really cool. I got a question for you, man. For sure. So you're a bit aware of the Alberta scene. 
I am. Is there a couple of wrestlers who, if you could pluck them out, out of Alberta to wrestle in Saskatchewan to see how they would do, is there any names that come to mind that you would love to see in Saskatchewan? Reed Matthews, first oh, and the foremost. Thickness, the thickness. Man. The thickness. I want to see the thickness come to Saskatchewan. I want to see the thickness in PPW. And I know a few other guys that do as well. I would we are, we are, we're like chomping there. at the bit for the thickness. We really are. Well, so oh, no. I, I did an interview recently with The Thickness, and I know he said one of the things he wants to do this year is travel. So if anybody's yeah. listening to this, Reed Matthews. Okay, make yeah, it I happen. will say this. Make it happen make because it happen. Reed Matthews is phenomenal. I love it. Yeah. I'm looking at my The King of Thick Style shirt right over there from where I, when I interviewed <laughs> him. It's still up there. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see the spaceman Barry Grayson. Is oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd, like, I'd, I'd like to see him come around as see well. some people fly with the spaceman? Yeah, yeah. Well, like I know, uh, I know a few of my friends that are uh, big fans of uh, of him as well. Yeah, you know? so. I love him. He's great. He's such a nice guy. He's a phenomenal wrestler. Dude is so tall too, He's like a tall, thin, high flying kind of yeah. guy. It's crazy. I met him at the Clandestine Society, and I was surprised at how tall he was as well. He yeah, kind of maybe he doesn't seem it so much uh, when you see uh, footage, but. When you're standing, I'm a tall guy, and I was standing next to him. I'm like, holy, okay. Well, I mean, he does look kind of short by comparison to his tag team partner, the Titan. But when (laughs) when you've got the Titan there, it's kind of hard to be as tall. But, I mean, the Titan's a big guy, right? So He is a big boy. Yeah. Cody is such a nice guy. Uh, Or Cody Frank, the Titan. I don't know if he still goes by Cody Frank, the Titan, or just the Titan. But I got to get him on my podcast. That's one of the people that I have. I'm chomping at the bit to get on here soon. So he goes by whatever he wants. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, just some other fun names I think would be great to see out in Saskatchewan. The Canadian Goose, Kyle Shaw. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, love to see people honk for the Canadian Goose out in Saskatchewan. <laughs> Big fan of that. But, uh, but let's end it there. Thank you very much for joining me today there, Mike. Before we do let you go, plug all your stuff, man. Well, you can find me on uh, Instagram and Twitter at DoCD. I'm uh, usually posting all the time, so yes, I'm you pr- are. I'm pretty active, pretty active, uh, tweeting wrestling and uh, whatever else on there. So, actually, there is one last thing I want you to talk about before we go because you told me this story once, and I want to hear more about it. You made four duplicate signs once. <laughs> I took it to us. You got to tell that story, man. Okay, okay, with Brett Evans. Uh, okay. So- <laughs> So uh, I would make signs and take him to shows, and uh, Brett Evans, being the heel he is, he would come and rip up my signs. And every show he'd come and rip up my signs. So, so I decided I'm just going to make duplicate signs, and I take it to the show and get them. So I go to the show with my Brett Evans sucks SpongeBob SquarePants <laughs> sign. And he goes and he ah, rips up my sign and he turns around to face the crowd and he's ah and I pull out one of the other signs and I hold it up and the crowd erupts and his backs to me and he doesn't see it and he's kind of like what what's going on here <laughs> and he turns around and sees me with his duplicate sign and burst out laughing. <laughs> you broke but him, I, man. You broke I him. I broke him. I broke him. <laughs> yeah. And he ah, takes that sign and he takes it, rips it up and storms off, kind of like laughing to himself. So then, boom! Another sign. <laughs> and he's just looking at me like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Do that. Yeah, I did that. Uh, this is why you're Mike the Sign Guy. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> You also wrapped one in tape once, so they couldn't rip it. <laughs> it looked ridiculous. Yeah, that's, right? that's another thing. Yeah. So, a uh, tip to if you want to have them not rip up your sign, tape up the back of your sign so they think that, oh, we're just going to rip up their sign. <laughs> and then they can't because they have to rip through tape and it's reinforced. And then you then you get to laugh as they struggle as they try to rip up your sign. <laughs> tips from Mike the Sign Guy. Everybody. It's all about the tip. <laughs> just the tip, man. Just, just the, tip. the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> all right. Thank you again, buddy. And I hope you have yourself a wonderful day. Dude, thanks for having me. Such a fun chat I was having there with Mike, learning a little bit about the Saskatchewan scene, some of the crossover stars that we have here in Alberta that they have over there in Saskatchewan, learning about Prairie Pro Wrestling and some of its most recent shows. 
a lot of fun. So many cool things to be happening. But before we let you go here today, guys, there's a lot of wrestling coming up. Right now, it is going to be February the 18th, which means in just two days here in Calgary, on February 20th, we have Heart Legacy Wrestling making their return back to Calgary at the back alley between 7.30 and 11.30 p.m. So you got to be checking out them. Check their stuff out on Twitter. Or if you're in Calgary, we'll see you at the back alley on Thursday. Um, otherwise, on Friday, we have here in Calgary, RCW's Wrestling Ain't Easy. They are bringing in the Godfather. Yes, the Godfather, Papa Shango. More, like One of the guys who got me into wrestling, to be completely honest, is going to be wrestling here in Calgary on Friday. And then they will be moving into uh, Edmonton on Saturday. There's a lot of wrestling in on Saturday as well. PWA fruition taking place in Edmonton as well. A lot of wrestling happening here in Alberta. That's three different promotions in the course of three different days. That's crazy. Over just two different cities. Just to go show you just the thriving scene that we have here in Alberta and uh, all the cool stuff that's going to be going on. So, guys, if you enjoyed this, remember to hit like and subscribe on whatever podcast app you're listening to this on. It really does help out the show if you give us a five-star rating and review, if that is what you want to do. I hope you all have yourself a wonderful day, and I'll be seeing you around Alberta for the wonderful world of wrestling that we have coming up here over the next couple of weeks. Cheers. Cheers.